Hey guys, welcome back to Coin Knowledge. So today we're going to be talking about GameSwift, which, if you guys have been around for the channel, you guys will know that GameSwift is one of the projects we look at heavily on this channel, especially in the gaming sector, because they've made huge announcements and huge updates within their ecosystem. So stay tuned, we're going to go over quickly what GameSwift is all about, as we have multiple in-depth videos on GameSwift on the channel. So if you want to learn more about GameSwift, what they're all about, what the ecosystem is, you can find those videos on the channel, or as always, I encourage you to do your own research because nothing I see on the video on you know the channel or on these videos is financial advice. And as always, if you get value out of these videos or out of this content, or if you made any money or gains on some of the calls we've made, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Your support means everything. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it supports the channel and more than you'd know. And real fast, I just want to apologize to you guys for being you know a little absent here on the channel recently. You might hear it in my voice. I am uh, pretty sick right now. I'm just, you know, battling, I don't know, a flu or something. But, uh, again, just want to put that out there. Uh, just a quick disclaimer where I've been. I've gotten in the comments just letting you guys know. I'm just sick. That's all. I'm still here. Just sick. Uh, but either way, let's get back to the video. So, Game Swift, as always, if you're not familiar with what Game Swift is, you know, again, we've made so many videos on Game Swift, so you really can go on there and you know, kind of learn a little bit more of a deep dive of what GameSwift is, but it is a, you know, as I say, the one-stop gaming ecosystem. They have their blockchain and a platform studio, their gaming infrastructure, so it's not just betting on one individual game. They have a lot going on here. Uh, you know, a lot of people compare it to a lower market cap maybe earlier on as, as far as finding it early on, like an Immutable X or more of a D-Gen, uh, IMX or Immutable of sorts because they do similar things, uh, right? Uh, they have their GameSwift Analytics, their GameSwift SDK, their GameSwift ID, kind of like Immutable's Passport. They have their own blockchain, you know, which games are coming out to, like Star Heroes. Uh, they have the roadmap that we've covered in the past, but that's just a quick and skinny, or the short and skinny, of GameSwift, uh, as it were. Again, multiple videos on the channel. That's not the point of today's video. Today's video, I want to point out the fact that they did the impossible. They did what so many investors, when they look at GameSwift, write it off. Uh, it cannot be argued in the past that GameSwift, tokenomics-wise, a lot of people get to GameSwift, they look at the circulating supply, and they write it off because there's not a lot of it in supply. At least that was the case in the past. Now, GameSwift has gone ahead and done the proactive move, and in my opinion, I don't know if they could have done a more bullish move here of doing a huge token burn of... We talked about I believe, in the last video, but now it is official... They did a 50 million token burn ignites new tokenomics in a bold move to revitalize G Swift. They burnt a massive batch of tokens to curb inflations and to drive up value, and really just to you know uh, make investors wanting to be a little bit more for coming in, looking more into Game Swift, and not just stopping at that wall that I hear in the comments all the time. Oh, we're tokenomics. Oh, those low supply, high dilution. This is going to be the end of that argument, so I'm happy about that. And you guys already know, we've been huge fans of GameSwift on the channel. I mean, all cycle. We were buying GameSwift. The videos are up. You can find them. We were buying GameSwift, at least if you guys were there, before gaming was running last at the end of 2023. So we made out pretty good there. So if you take a look at the breakdown, we'll take a look at the new tokenomic breakdowns. Then we'll look at a recap of what they accomplished last month. And then we'll look at the recent price action to give you guys my opinion on where GameSwift could potentially go from here. Uh, you know, that says that they did a 30% came or 30% from the seed buyback and burn, 70 cent or 76% treasury born burn, burn of a hundred and forty tokens, million tokens from operational and team pools. Now, instead of where it used to be, which I think was like eleven percent circulating, now over half, fifty-one percent of tokens earn circulation. You heard that right. Over half of G Swift is in circulation right now, which is crazy because that's what it was going to be at the end of next year. Now that dilution has already happened. Uh, now what that means is that the new market cap has been brought up from about 5 million, 5 to 10 million to 29 million. I believe it stands at about 31 million right now at the time of recording this video. So huge burn. I mean, Again, it brought the total supply down from, we can see, you know, almost 1.4 billion G Swift all the way down to 771 million. That's pretty huge. I mean, again, the only thing I can compare this to is back, you know, towards the beginning of this year, 
only other ecosystem that comes to mind immediately that was doing these kind of burns was Cytus Heroes, you know, with a Cytus token and Senate token. And obviously that did pretty well for them. So I think GameSwift, and this is even way more than they burnt. I think this is a definitely a move in the right direction. If we, if we look at the breakdown here that they have, this is a huge burn. Uh, and it concludes their three-step recovery plan, enhancing the value proposition of GSwift through smart token management. Again, now with the market cap of $29 million, it narrows a gap with the FDV. So now they're well-positioned for GSwift for future growth. If you look at this graph or like image that they put here, if I can, if I can load it, if I can get my computer to load, it says, uh, you know, the current market cap circulating is around 30 million. Let's just call it around 30 million. But a fully diluted is around 60 million. Again, at max with 51% in circulation right now, there is never going to be more than a, you know, whatever it is, 1.9 or 2x dilution. So now we look at a coin in an ecosystem that went from, I think it was like a 5x dilution between now and the end of 2025 to at most in its life cycle, 2x. So you could see how it's a pretty big deal for GameSwift here. And really, if any ecosystem did this, it'd be insane. So now there's a whole new breakdown of how everything's going. Uh, they have all their cliffs. So you can feel free to pause the video here at any moment. I just wanted to bring up that graph there. Uh, and then that's kind of the biggest update on the tokenomics side. But that's not all. GameSwift has actually accomplished a lot in August. We've made updates on them as it goes. But we'll just kind of go down the list because you know me. I love talking about GameSwift. I made many, many videos on GameSwift. We've done DCA alerts in the private group because I think GameSwift is a sleeper. Literally say that every time. Here are the updates that they've been accomplishing. This is just in August alone, by the way. This isn't the whole cycle. This is just in August. 31 days. Right. Yeah, 31 days. So they partnered with Fetch AI, which I believe... As they say, that makes them the first gaming project to team up with Fetch AI. Obviously, if you're not familiar, Fetch AI is kind of a bigger, not so much a titan, but just a higher cap and known name in the AI space. Could be a titan, I guess, uh, whatever you classify that as. But high market cap, staple in the AI sector. Now, we know that AI is going to be one of, if not the hottest narrative of the cycle. So the fact that they're partnering with a top tier project in one of the hottest narratives is very bullish so together they're going to be pioneering the fusion of ai in web3 transforming computing power into user profit uh, as well their vision is a marketplace where idle resources so think gpu graphic cards can be turned into earnings we see that happen with a lot of ai projects in the space because a lot of people don't realize that game swift does have an ai component of their ecosystem you know they're not just gaming whereas that's a main focus they do have AI as well with computing power to drive the mass adoption of Web3 Gaming, which makes sense, the partnership with Fetch AI. So, you know, GameSwift also touches on two of the biggest narratives, gaming and AI, which, again, I say it every time, I think people sleep on the fact that GameSwift is, you know, about AI as well. So, obviously, we looked at number two, the fact that the tokenomics went from, you know, again, less than a 2x dilution between now and forever which is pretty insane and don't worry a lot of i got this comment uh you know here recently on twitter or tweet whatever uh that somebody was worried that oh well now the market cap just went up you know from five to ten million to thirty million well yes you can look at it that way as yes the market cap went up because more tokens went into circulation but overall it didn't because now there's not really dilution between now and the end of 2025 in a roundabout way the market cap actually is still lower at today's prices as if you were to buy today and hold to the end of 2025. You're still getting it at a lower market cap, if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to break that down a little bit better. I'm just sick right now, so apologies. But either way, very bullish as far as the market cap goes and the circulation. GameSwift AI Launcher. So they did a deep dive revealing how 70% of their users can leverage AI via the GameSwift Launcher as well. Imagine generating music documents solving complex problems all powered by ai i'm gonna start running through these you know they do new power for the gs dow treasury launch of the ai roundtable as well we see big people as or big projects that were also part of the discussion like wilder world star heroes aperion abyss protocol 
So, you know, pretty big names in the gaming sector. Uh, so, you know, and Abyss Protocol, you know, they focus on AI, and they were part of their first AI roundtable, so good to see that. The Super Game, collaboration with Chroma Network. So two leading gaming chains on the Super Chain kicked off a joint campaign, so GameSwift and Chroma attracting 12,000 users. More activities with the Chroma are on the horizon. And they are going to be, you know, they did go to GamesCon, making waves at Europe's biggest event. This massive gaming festival attracted tens of thousands of gamers and a treasury trove. So they're bringing these gems to the GameSwift plat platform. So pretty good to see that they got involved with Games GamesCon there. And then Asia Superchain event or Pioneers event at KB Official, KBW Official. And then they co-hosted an event in Seoul with, again, even more projects. So, uh, you know, they got support from Sonium, which, again, that's a whole video in and of itself. That's Sony. Yes, Sony, PlayStation, Sony's blockchain that they're building. If you haven't heard about it, it's kind of a big deal. But either way, a lot of people are pointing out the fact that the Fetch AI partnership is huge. I mean, just imagine in a true gaming or AI, really just a bull cycle, all coin season, if Fetch AI, Fetch AI was a highlight and, you know, integrate GameSwift a lot more throughout a huge AI run, that's where, you know, something like GameSwift, which has exposure to gaming and AI, let's say gaming isn't running, but they go hard with a partnership of Fetch AI, then GameSwift can still run in an AI narrative, in an AI run, but also run in a gaming run because it focuses on both narratives. That's another bullish catalyst of GameSwift, which again, I think is pretty slept on. I don't think a lot of people realize that. But that's just what they accomplished in August alone. Now, obviously, stuff like Coin Market Cap, Coin Gecko, Crypto Rank, they don't have the updated tokenomics yet. So you're it is still reflecting the lower market cap right now. Now, this isn't the correct market cap, obviously, since we just went over it. But if you take a look at the price action, you know, GameSwift is sitting at 0 0.08, which I think is still a pretty, sorry, I think GameSwift is still a pretty undervalued, you know, value proposition, even at a $30 million market cap. Obviously, how I've been getting the price or the market cap here recently is that you can just go up here, you can screenshot it or go to the tweet. Uh, this is how I've been doing it. Uh, you can take a look at the 771 million and 400,000, and then you can times that by point. 51 uh 0.5145 and that should give you the market cap uh right there so i believe we do the math it's like a 31 million dollar market cap off today's prices but after the news here we saw game switch climb up to you know almost 11 cents uh which is pretty impressive seeing as how it was on its way down to the mid sevens uh, if we look at the all chart again we were getting Game Swift, you know, early on, uh, around a, it was around like a two million, uh, two to five million dollar market cap, like very early on, like early November, very early on here, which, at you know, you're buying it at the prices we were. I'm just saying that that's how long we've been in Game Swift, and a lot of people in the past, I think, don't realize that what Game Swift has been doing because they just wrote it off because of the tokenomics. It's obviously. If you don't do more research in the vesting schedule and what's going on with the project, it's easy to get to coin, its coin market cap page of, oh, well, there's a low market cap, but a high FTV, and, you know, none of the tokens are in supply, and then they move on. But, as you guys know, we have kept on with GameSwift because I've been telling you guys, screaming to you guys, you know, figuratively, that GameSwift was undervalued. Uh, you know, I was saying, even up here, when GameSwift got up to, I think it was like 88 cents, uh, 83 cents was the all-time high for GameSwift uh, this cycle. I, I was telling you guys, you know, this is a project that is going to shock a lot of people because it really does have the buildings of, you know, the Immutable X, up-and-coming Immutable X of the cycle. You know, with all the partnerships, AI, gaming, they obviously have their test net that is live. They said their main net is ready, it's been ready, it just... You know, this is also a team that understands crypto because they understand that if they put out their main net right now, it's not going to do a lot. Because, you know, if you look across the markets, we're not in a bullish time right now. We're not in a gaming run. We're not in an all coin season. They want to save the game, their main chain or the main net release for an all coin season where it's going to have the most impact on the price action, on the ecosystem, on the token, which, hey, I'm all here for that. I, I, I think that's a good move. 
It's just like if any team wanted to wait to get an exchange listing, you know, for an altcoin season to come. That's a-okay with me. Now, a lot of people do complain that they're building on Arbitrum, but I do expect Arbitrum to do well. We've seen a lot of chains kind of take a sideline, you know, after the whole Solana craze that has been the majority of the cycle with the ETFs, with the meme coins, and just Solana has performed very well, you know, over the uh, over the last year, year and a half. Solana's been killing it. So I think a lot of chains have taken a back burner, even stuff like Avalanche, Polygon, Arbitrum. But either way, I think Arbitrum will still, be, will still do well. They still have their Ethereum uh, token as well, and they do have their own mainnet coming. So don't fret if you're not bullish on Arbitrum. Uh, if you take a look at their exchange listings, as always, they don't have a whole lot. They have Bybit, Mexi, and BitGet. And then obviously, they have the Dex route if you want to go decentralized. So again, if they want to add more exchange listings, I believe they can. I just personally agree whenever a team says they want to wait until, you know, all coin season so it has a maximum effect. I get that. I'm here for that. Another thing that GameSwift, the team, has, you know, made known is, you know, and I tell you guys, GameSwift, they have a docs team, huge team, and they do constant town halls on their YouTube. You can find it. Uh, you know, again, Fetch AI did put out the tweet here, breaking further down into their uh, partnership. If you want to read into that, I encourage it. Uh, I'm not going to read it right now. The video will go a little bit too long. And I want you guys to do some research here. It's just, it's what you guys got to do. So, you know, their team, they do constant town halls. Uh, they put out constant updates. You know, this is what you want out of a team. You want them to get in front of a camera, keep their community updated, listen to their community, do the right updates like the token burns, like the partnerships, like everything else we went over. That's it. And they're working on their product. They've already had over a couple million transactions flawlessly, I should say, without any failures in the system. They've had millions of transactions on their testnet already. Products, Projects are already building on GameSwift, like Star Heroes, like other projects. They're making money. They're making revenue, I believe, incubating these projects. So the team, the project is already generating revenue, which you want to see. They have a working product. They're doing the right updates and partnerships, like with a huge token burn. They're lacking, which I think is a good thing. They're lacking tier one exchange listings that could potentially come, even more tier twos that could potentially come later on in the cycle. They have their main net yes, yet to release with more projects building on it. Again, all these contributing factors lead me to believe that GameSwift is undervalued at today's prices. That's just my opinion. Obviously, we can see on the right-hand side here that the community sentiment on current market cap seems like a lot of people are voting for it to be bullish. That's where I stand. Let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of GameSwift? As always, I believe that GameSwift is going to go higher later on in the cycle. Now, when? I don't know. At a $30 million market cap, people were calling me crazy when I thought this GameSwift could run from a 5 to $10 million to a billion. But now, at a $30 million market cap... You know, it's still quite a ways. It will be a ways to get to a billion, but it's not that much longer now. I still think that GameSwift is a billion dollar circulating market cap uh, project or project, to, you know, at the height of an AI or gaming run. If the altcoin season really gets crazy like we think it potentially could, I personally don't think it's insane to think that GameSwift can get to 500 million to a billion market cap wise. Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, if you want to support the channel, the Patreon's linked below optional or there's a free discord you can get in there and ask some questions as well and again i do apologize for being absent here recently it's just i have been pretty sick i almost didn't shoot this video but i want to keep you guys updated on again one of our favorite projects game swift just uh i'm gonna hopefully get over this cold or whatever this thing is it's kicking my butt but hopefully i can get over it here soon so we can get back to the regular content and again really guys i appreciate all the support if you got value out of today's video or if you appreciate the updates on these projects, consider liking the video, commenting, sharing, hitting the notification bell, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, see you guys.